fast access to shared storage, all of your previous media that is also searchable access from anywhere in the world, a render farm using that shared storage. I think you might know what I'm getting at here. I'm going to hazard a guess that currently you rely on external hard drives or you might even have a RAID setup, but it doesn't have NAS functionality and you know that you want to move to the next level. I know the pain, I've been there too. I've been through the exact same issues having built out a few post-production teams now in digital video, animation, creative content production, I can tell you this is a common problem. At each point, I've come into those teams and the reliance on external hard drives or cloud storage providers is like the bottleneck that is holding everybody back from their potential. It just eats away at efficiency. And that goes against everything that DigiPro Tip stands for. Because here, we work smarter, not harder. It gives you more time to be creative. A NAS is a central hub of storage that is accessible on and off your network and therefore is shared storage. This has like an, an immediate benefit over external drives because you can all access the same media at the same time without having to share drives all around the room. It also has an advantage over like cloud storage providers because you don't have to selectively sync which media you want for that project and wait for it to download and then have it take up precious storage space on your PC. The next thing is that all of your media is stored in one location, which is indexed by the NAS and then becomes searchable. So that specific shot that you know looked awesome from like three years ago, well, that's no longer in a heap of drives in a drawer somewhere. That is now just a search bar away. On top of this, your media has like a layer of protection over external hard drives because your NAS has something which is usually set up on them called RAID. And simply put, this spreads the data across the drives in the NAS. And so if one drive was to fail, you don't lose your data. You just have to replace that drive and away you go. Gone are the days of corrupted or damaged drives with unrecoverable data on them. Yeah, I've been there too. Oh yeah, and one final point. Remember that mess of cables that you have to go through every single time you find that drive that has that one shot on it from three, five years ago, and it's got that specific type of port jack, like mini micro USB, whatever it might be. Yeah, you don't have to worry about that either. Everything is done through your ethernet connection. Internet and access to your media are just done through that one cable. All right, so what are some of these bigger benefits then, on top of all of those smaller ones, that NAS have over external drives? Well, the first one kind of goes against what I mentioned about cloud storage, but that's because it's integrated and that's different because NAS these days have the ability to link up, sync up with your cloud storage provider. Whether that's the likes of Dropbox, G Drive, Box, or something more longer term like colder archival storage like AWS Backblaze, it doesn't matter. They can all be used and synced with your NAS. And what this means is it could save you money. How? Well, instead of buying a NAS with all the drives filled with all of the media from your back catalog, you could buy a drive with half, a third or quarter of that space and use that as your hot storage. So everything locally that you currently want to work on from the last, I don't know, couple of months, even a year, and everything else is stored up in the cloud through your NAS. If you ever need to work on it again, you just sync it to your NAS and you have fast access to that media that was once up there. This can also be used in one of a number of ways for remote working. If you set up your NAS and your cloud storage provider with a two-way sync so that any changes made with a designer or editor are synced back to the NAS, then you can have people working remotely from the media on the NAS via a cloud sync facility. And talking of remote working with your team, designers, editors, whoever you might be remote working with, this is probably one of the most useful parts of having a NAS these days, being able to work with your team from anywhere in the world. I mean, this wasn't so easy to do even just kind of a few years ago, but capabilities and internet speeds have improved dramatically over that time. Most NAS these days have their own cloud sync kind of software. It does exactly the same job as the providers, as I mentioned earlier, but with just your media from just your NAS and you don't need to pay for it. It comes as part of it. So you simply set up 
the cloud sync functionality on the NAS, and then you have a local client app on all of the computers that you might need to be able to remote with and selectively sync the media from the NAS that you want to have a two-way sync with. And you have remote editing capabilities from your NAS to your remote designers, editors around the world. Any changes they make will be reflected on not only everybody else's machines, but also on the NAS itself. So everybody stays in tune with each other. It's just like working from your local office. Everything that is changed on a computer via the NAS is changed for everybody. There are many ways to work remotely with NAS these days. So don't let the fear of leaving the office be there any longer. Check out my video on how to do it just up there. Right, remember that crazy idea I had at the start of the video where we were gonna set up some sort of like After Effects render farm on a NAS? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, that, that was actually true. And it's something that you can definitely do with a NAS. And it's not even just for After Effects, but specifically, I'm talking about After Effects right now. But you can use it for Cinema 4D, for Blender, for Maya, for Nuke, whatever it might be. All of those things that usually have render farms in post-production houses that are, you know, significantly times bigger, they all need shared storage to be able to do that. Once you have a NAS, you have shared storage and you can do the same thing. See, I was in the same position. I was like, there are all these computers in this office they're all on the same network. They're all using the same software. They're all op open the same project. What, what, we can't link them together to act as a render farm? Well, yeah, you can. You just needed that one crucial piece, the shared storage that links it all together. And you see with After Effects, when you download After Effects, you actually download another app called the AE Renderer which is free to use and install on any other computer you like. And so even if you have computers that are on the network that can be connected to the NAS that don't necessarily need to do design work, you can leverage them for a render farm for After Effects. Now, if you wanna know how to do this, and this is the manual way to do this, then check out the video up there. There are automated ways of using AE Renderer, so do have a search for that, but the manual way is just a click away. Okay, well, they sound like pretty good advantages over external drives to me. Well, of course they would do because I'm biased, I'm the one that's making this video. But which NAS do you choose? Now, that's a good question. I don't know if you asked that question, but I'm asking it for you. Do you go with a two, four, eight, 12 rack mounted, 16, however many bay system? Do you need gigabit, 10 gigabit, 25 gigabit ethernet connections? Do you need an SSD cache or do you need SSDs at all? Do I need Thunderbolt? Well, I can tell you that you do need some of them, but not all of them. And I can also tell you that the right size Synology or QNAP NAS for your team is just there. 